What up, people? So today, we're hanging out with the rhinos because we just haven't really hung out with them much. So we're down here, just dropped some uh, some food here and here with a uh, Tammy girl and Sully right down here. Look how sweet they are. These guys really are, I love them the Lewis size. They're, they're gorgeous, they're awesome, they're amazing. But just temperament wise, I mean, I still obviously have some Lewis size that are nut jobs. These guys are just perfect. That is just a gosh darn dinosaur. So the rhinos are, as far as, you know, the three species of cyclora that are, are kept in the pet trade in the U.S., um, the rhinos, the Lewis size, and then the Cuban rock iguanas. These guys are the heaviest bodied one. These guys are absolutely more so like the pit bulls of the iguanas. Because, um, I mean, they'll get, you know, they'll get about four foot just like the others but a big male could easily get 20 plus pounds, where, you know, the Lewis size and the Cuban, you know, typically around 15 um, is gonna be a big male. Of course, there's always exceptions. But yeah, these guys just get just, they get just so big and meaty, but they're just such sweethearts. I mean, yeah, instead of eating, he's just sitting here taking his pets. Tammy's eating over there, so I'll get some love here in a minute. Yeah, rhinos are just so awesome. You know, so these guys come from uh, a couple different sections in the Caribbean. Um, they're coming out of Haiti, Hispaniola, that kind of area is all their natural habitat. And they're in kind of a like very brushy, deserty type region. Oh gosh, I gotta fix myself there. Um, yeah, these guys are just awesome. Both of these guys came from the lovely folks at Starborn Reptiles in Florida. My Tammy girl shedding had them now for a little while and they just they are just absolutely amazing amazing creatures um they're also probably the most common in the pet trade as well um you know the lewis eyes and, and cubans for the folks that have a, the cubans or the cubans the cyclora they are popular but you, i tend to see a lot more people come across the rhinos than they do um the other subspecies and I mean, I can understand why, you know, these guys just with their, with their temperaments, they generally are just such amazing, incredible animals. Um, they're super, super easy to keep. Also, all the cyclera species, they're all uh, very, very, very easy to keep, which if you've been following the channel, I have posted a video talking about care, um, a little bit more in depth. But these guys are just super, super easy. You know, they're, they're herbivores, which, you know, you can throw in some animal protein every now and again, which, covered that as well in another video um, but super easy just different greens so this is just mustard greens but that turnip greens collard greens dandelion greens you know endive escarole there, there's all sorts of different stuff mix in some different veggies like some different squashes um, you know carrots every now and again green beans stuff like that give them their normal vitamin dusting calcium dusting and their diet's super easy. You know, it's very difficult to uh, to overfeed an herbivore, especially one that's growing. Once they get to be adult size, then you just gotta be careful that they just don't get too fat. But that's typically not too much of an issue here from these guys. Hot basking temperatures. So you're gonna want at least 120. Um, they like it super, 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 super hot. I like giving them a range, so in all of our basking spots, It'll normally range anywhere from 100 on the corners up to, you know, 120, 130 in the middle, and they can just pick where they want to go. Ambient temp, you know, low to mid 80s. Um, UVB is an absolute must. These guys need very strong UVB, so we use the Mega Rays. Um, in big cages like these, we do the 160 watt. They are mercury vapor bulbs, so they give off heat and UVB. In my experience, they are just, I like them a lot better than the tubes. Um, yeah, just keep them hot, give them that good UVB, give them a huge cage. If you think it's a big cage, it's not going to be big enough. Um, they're very, very active animals. They move around a lot. Um, so they definitely need a lot of space. This cage that we're in here is, all in all, it's about, it's 12 foot long from that corner all the way to that corner. It is five foot right here. I believe it's another five foot right here. We corner, and I think this is, might be six feet, so. Oh no, it's weird, there's a corner in the basement, so I kind of built around it. Uh, but this is a big cage, and honestly, once they are full, full grown, 
I would want something even bigger than this. I mean, you can see right now, they got, even if I were to cut this cage in half, they still have plenty of space, or it would appear that they have plenty of space. But like I said, they are, excuse me, they're just very, very, very active animals. Um, so like Flora as a whole, they are, uh, they love to move around and explore. They are definitely more land dwellers than they are tree climbers. So your floor area is much, much, much more important than your height. I still like having a tall enclosure so I can come in and walk in and be comfortable um, and give them slight climbing opportunities when they're big. You know, so just real simple, just climbing up onto a basking spot there. They have a big branch that they can come here to climb onto this cat tree. Um, but for the most part, floor space is gonna be the most important thing for these guys. Always make sure to use plenty of places that they can hide, especially if you're keeping a pair of them together. It's even more important to have a, a large, large, large cage because they need to be able to establish their own territories and they also need to be able to get out of each other's vision, which is why I've got the two different basking spots, which one right here and inside of that cubby basically, and one over there. So if there was ever a territory dispute or anything like that, there's an opportunity that both lizards can bask in peace without being seen by the other. And I, and I did the same thing for feeding. Typically I'll have like a dish here and then back like behind this, uh, that, that's just an old one. Um, so again, so you can feed them and they can be stress-free while they eat. Thankfully, Tammy and Sully here are the sweethearts. Um, of course, when they first got together, Tammy is definitely the queen bee. So she had to assert her dominance a little bit and Sully being the good sweet boy that he is, would submit. Um, and they, they get along just absolutely great. They climb all over each other. They can eat next to each other. And thankfully, they are just very, very, very well behaved. Um, you know, I tried having Ron and Tammy together for a while, but they just too, too, too many uh, territory disputes. Because um, Ron's not necessarily submissive, but he's also not super dominant. And Tammy being as dominant as she is, it just... It, it just didn't gel, um, unfortunately, but thankfully he's in there with Bindi in one of the other cages, which of course they're, they've escaped out of again because it's a crappy cage. And it's another project this summer is I want to uh, build a couple more nice big cages here in the basement and get rid of the crap that I built. So they can stop getting into the basement and then we're gonna need some upgrades for some other animals as well. So that's yet another fun project. But, uh, but yeah, these rhinos are just, they're just so awesome. I mean, they're they're such intelligent animals. Um, they're they're affectionate. A lot of times, I'll come in here with or without food. When I came down in here the other day to actually feed these guys, Tammy just completely ignored the food and she just came running, just tried with all her might to climb up my arm, up my shorts, up my shirt to get up onto my shoulder. Um, and she just she's like a little parrot. She just loves coming up, getting her scratches. Um, so these guys really do make just awesome, awesome pets. You know, they, they don't cost too much to get, you know, in comparison to like some of the Lewis size. A lot of these babies are gonna go for four to 500 bucks. Um, and yeah, once they, once they calm down and you start developing that trust, I mean, they're just, let me just look at that face. It's got those big old horns. She's got her horns too little fat reserves on top of their head. But they're just some sweet, amazing animals. And if anybody that has the space to accommodate a Cyclora, I mean, I, I really can't recommend them enough um, to have as a, a pet, um, especially if you like having big animals. I mean, they're just, a, a, as a big reptile, this is the ultimate pet if you have the space for it. Um, so much easier than a big snake or a big monitor. You don't gotta worry about rodents. You don't have to worry about, you know, handling a 100, 150 pound, you know, giant reed tick, a 50, 60 pound, you know, giant water monitor. You don't have to worry about all that. These guys, they stay manageable at, you know, three to four foot. You know, they, they're gonna cap out at 15 to 20 pounds. Of course, the females will stay a little bit lighter than that. Tammy, where are you going, girl? You crazy. Yeah, they're, they're just the ultimate reptile. I really can't recommend recommend any of them enough. Um, I, the Lewis size, I absolutely love. If you love like just 
the blue, just real like iguana looking animal. Um, the rhinos are amazing if you want something that, that does look a little bit more prehistoric. Um, you know, their colors are, are a lot more boring, of course, even though they do get some blues, which if I know how to handle a camera. Now you can see on his spikes here after he's shed, he's got some blues on him. Uh, you can see on her foot. So when they fresh shed, they'll have, some of the animals will actually get little hints of blue in them. And they're really pretty, but they're just awesome. I really can't recommend any of the Cyclora species enough. You know, hoping for some babies this year from our Tammy girl. She is, she is looking a little bit thick. She doesn't quite look as gravid as, you know, what Gabby and Skye look like. But she is definitely due to hopefully pop us some babies this year. These two are just, they're just a perfect pair. They're both multi-horned um, and they're very, their horns are very, very prominent. Uh, I mean, especially Solium, it's got that giant one right there. So, which means that hopefully their babies will, will come out and have the same, which a lot of folks really love that multi-horn. Um, I think that is just the coolest thing. Oh, I think I've got a little tickle spot there on his tail. <laughs> Twitch it around. But yeah. Oh yeah. That tickle in you a little bit there, silly boy. Oh, such a good boy. Goodness gracious. And if y'all have any additional questions, you know, about the rhinos, um, feel free to drop me a line. So if you go back and watch our uh, some of our other videos where we do talk more in depth about them, this is just real quick, just hanging out with them, talking about them a little bit, um, and kind of just giving kind of a Cliff Notes version of them. Um, I'm gonna make a video in the, our Species Spotlight series that I did with the Lewis eyes. I'm gonna do the same thing with the rhinos where I do talk more in depth with them. But uh, yeah, they're just awesome guys. So appreciate y'all for watching. Um, you know, comment below, let me know which rhino is your favorite. You know, I'm, I'm, I love all of them, but I think I might be a little partial with Tammy. My Tammy girls are so sweet. Sweet, sweet baby. All right, guys, we'll catch y'all next time. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to us. Turn those post notifications on so you can see when we post more uh, awesome Aquana videos. And then uh, we'll catch y'all next time.